Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Avatar The Last Airbender book 3 episode number 7 and 8. Okay, the previous two episodes. Um, episode number 5, it showed us Azula and no, Azula's crew, that is Daili, Mai and uh, Zuko, them getting into a normal situation, which is pretty normal for children to get into, but because they are not accustomed to anything, we actually see how awkward they are. Even Azula was actually struggling to converse with people. And we see, like, you know, how, like, you know, what type of, uh, like, how they were brought up and how they are not really accustomed to normal stuff that now they are just struggling to converse with, like, kids their age. And, like, we kind of get a more in depth uh you know explanation of the different characters their background for example we get to know more about tai lee how she does not want to be like a part of a set like her sisters you know she wants individuality um <clears throat> mai who has always been uh you know like under her mom her mom probably like you know did not let her do anything like probably suppressed her as azula said and Zuko, we all know what his problem is. Like that's nothing new. And Azula, his her problem of uh, her mom not actually like you know like uh, what can I say paying attention to her. Now like I I know people might say like you know like that that after that like Azula said something like my mo mom called me a monster and then she suddenly said that not that I like deny it like <laughs> but still it hurt. Like, I know people might say that, oh, like, he, she's still not, like, you know, like, what can I say? Like, she's not that much bothered by it. But in my opinion, she is bothered by it. Otherwise, she would not bring that up at all. And I think this kind of shows us that Azula, if she, uh, like, you know, if she was brought up properly, she probably would have been a good person. Unlike how she is now, because, you know, like, her dad paid more attention to her. And we know how the dad is so yeah it kind of shows how like you know like, like they could have taken like she could have taken a different uh, uh like you know she could have become a different person if she was actually properly brought up but sad stuff and yeah but in the end there was like a happy ending <laughs> everyone was laughing like did them doing their own things there is destruction so yeah that was that and then the next episode we kind of got a little backstory of Roku and um uh what, what was the name i forgot so you, so you said, was was that the file lord's name i forgot completely great grandfather zuko's great grandfather i forgot his name anyways um we got their backstory how like you know they're related and in the end there was like a shocking revelation that uh, zuko is actually like roku is actually zuko's great grandfather of his mother's side and i think his name was sui anyways like you know he was like from like, grand great grandfather from his father's side so he is the perfect person you know to bring balance to the world he has both good and like you know like evil in him that's why it's kind of like you know like there's this huge uh, conflict going on inside him and it's like like the good and the evil you know like the, that whole thing of the angel and the devil that kind of like you know <laughs> Uh, whispers in your mind that kind of thing that's going on and that's why he's so conflicted and hopefully by the end I'm, I'm sure he'll change now I think so most probably if he still doesn't change I don't know what else to say I'm sure he'll change after this because it does seem he will we'll see but yeah without further ado let's get started this is episode number uh, seven of a after the last airbender book three. Oh, and uh, the, the guy uh, the guy with the um, who's who's falling the avatar like you know that that's also another thing that was happening we, we might see him in this episode but anyways this, that was a long intro let's get started so um i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it whichever is your preference and let's get started all right so here's the countdown three two one go okay <clears throat> hmm. 
Hmm. <clears throat> okay. Okay, let's uh, let's take this. I might get spoiled or something. Oh boy. So this is the seventh and the eighth episode which I'll react to. We're almost at the halfway point. So, but I think there's quite a few things left that needs resolving. So I wonder how they're going to do this. Like, you know, I think this has 20 episodes. So 14 more episodes left if I actually count this episode as well. So okay, anyways, let's see. The Runaway. Okay. Whoa, what's happening here? What the? Oh no, what's happening? Oh no, what? Wait, what's... What? Wait, what is happening even? Oh, I, I think this is like some kind of a trick they're doing. Like, to make the enemy... This must be some kind of a plan. A bigger plan. Let's see. What are they, training? I think so. Yep, it's training. Oh my god, this is Toff's technique. Ooh! Damn, look at him! Oh! Nice! Ooh! Oh my god! <laughs> Okay, Katara, you're actually... Okay, this is no more angst training. This is basically a fight. <laughs> Ang is just... <laughs> oh no, what's he doing? <laughs> you don't scream at a... Yeah, <laughs> this is... Oh my god. Oh my... What's happening? Why are they... Yeah. <laughs> she just earth bended the mud off. Handy. <laughs> Okay. What? Um. <laughs> oh. Be you want to? Oh, great. She wants to gamble. Kind of gambling, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, true, she can. Uh... Ooh! Yeah, she can do it. Eh? Okay. He's like. Yeah, he's like. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> uh. Ooh! Slick! Oh my god, this guy! <laughs> oh my god, friend. Ooh. 
Oh, he was... Damn, this guy is... <laughs> oh... Oh! It's in your sleeves! Oh! Nice! Oh! Yep! <laughs> well, there you go. Now people will like, actually believe you that you're not, like, you know, like, uh, tricking people. That they, they helped you, actually. Don't say scammed. She, uh, yeah. Come on, you can cheat against people who cheats. Yeah. True. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Not from Momo though. Okay. Oh! Oh! Ang! <laughs> wow, they're becoming... Oh, God. Oop! Earth vending time! And they don't even, like, they think they're firebenders. They won't even actually think about them being earthbenders, you know? That's another thing. But this might actually give away their um, identity, you know? Like, I'm kind of thinking about this. Someone might suspect. Yeah, like, she's showing off her powers too much. Oh my god. I really hope people don't suspect. Oh my god, this is like a... <laughs> Come on, tough! <laughs> <laughs> wow, they're extorting money at this point. Great. And is this how an avatar should act? Yeah, people might suspect. <laughs> Boy, <Wild> child. <laughs> I can't. Um. Okay. Katara. Uh. Oh boy. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what's that? No, bad. That's too long. It's too long. Hmm. <laughs> she just <laughs> Oh my god. Great. Great, Saka. I don't get into trouble. Oh my god, he bought one. And a flying bison as well. Oh no, I knew this is going to happen. Oh great. Yeah, she was... Uh, uh, <laughs> she was showing off 
her power too much. Wow, it's a nice place. Now that I look at it again. Damn, so much money. Yep. <laughs> Saka. Yeah. The runaway. No. <laughs> No, it looks bad. <laughs> yeah, Katara was right. Oh. Oh my god. Saka and his invasion. Oh, that'll be cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yo. These are... <laughs> Yeah. Grand Gun freak out seeing a fine nation bird. Um... It's like, nope, too much work. Oh no! Yep! Oh! <laughs> but Momo actually instigated that. That's not Hockey's fault. Wow! That was a nice way to. F mm. Oh, she found out. <laughs> How did she find out? Oh. <laughs> yes, she can find out who's lying. You know what this reminds me of? Yeah. Like her mom, her parents, and Katara. <laughs> like. Ah. Uh. <laughs> um <laughs> oh. oh my god so, like i realize this now like the whole freedom thing with Toph, you know like katara is kind of like a mom you know like like a parent who looks at your well-being and everything so Toph is kind of Okay, I'll talk about it later. Um, no, no, that, that's a bad idea. That's a bad idea. Yeah, Toph would... Toph can't... Oh, Toph is blind. I forgot about that. Saka, oh my god. Saka! <laughs> oh, I also forgot about it! <laughs> For a moment that I even forgot about. Yeah, true. <laughs> Me too, I guess. Toph can't read! <laughs> Katara, uh, Aang. <laughs> Alright. Oh my god, this, this episode is kind of <laughs> really funny. <clears throat> just underneath. 
pretty much a pain. <laughs> but, but, yeah. Yeah, like freedom is good, but you also need a little bit of restraint. Okay. Oh. Damn. Yeah, like both of you. <sighs> yeah, okay. Hmm. <clears throat> okay, that's nice. What? Ah! <laughs> oh no, what now? Is she like going to teach her how this might go bad? Because in the first thing we see Toph getting captured. Or oh, maybe not. Oh, they're gonna scam that. Oh my god. That's okay. That's good. <laughs> that's good thinking. <coughs> yep. Now give me the money. Money? Yes. Where's the money? Yeah. Okay, hopefully this doesn't go any... This doesn't go bad. It's kind of a risky thing that they're doing. Wait, is this... Oh no, it's wooden! Oh no! Um, better start wood bending, I guess. Hopefully, she can. <laughs> oh my god! Oh no, this went bad completely. Oh no. Yeah, I was like... Yeah! Stop, I'm in charge! No. Oh boy. What? No. Oh! <coughs> True! Okay, Katara. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Was that a compliment? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, true. Oh boy. Okay, well, here we go again. Oh, he realizes it. Move! 
Oof, damn, this attack is scary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My god, here we go. Can we woodbend? Is there something? Uh, oh no. Oh, sweat. Oh. I think maybe they can woodbend because there's no wood, like you need water. Maybe earth. Yo, this is cool. Oh, oh, they can just use water too. Okay. Yeah, I forgot about that. They cut metal. <laughs> they cut metal with water. The wood is just. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Brain. <laughs> I don't think he's shooting from his forehead. I think it's just basic fire bending. He's just making it look like. God. <laughs> okay. Oh, 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 he landed. Um. Woo! Yeah, let's go. Run. Dude, firebend. Yeah. Oh. Wait, is, is it really that he shoots from his forehead? I thought that was just basic firebending. <laughs> Combustion man. Kind of. Still it's long. Combustion man. <laughs> oh. What? Okay. Oh yeah, you, you, hopefully the bird will help. Oh, there you go. Won't they freak out seeing it's a Fire Nation bird? <laughs> Poor Saka. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, that's the end. Wow, that was great. That was a great episode. Again, um, this episode really made me realize how like you know how Toph said and how like you know this whole thing of Katara being kind of like a parent you know uh, being like the mother or the old, uh, elder sister figure of this crew and how Toph really did not like the whole construct a constricting feeling of being you know like <clears throat> being in one place and taking away her freedom which she always went through when she was a child and so basically what's happening here is Toph obviously loves his her parents but at the same time I think whenever her parents situation comes into her mind she relates that with the fact that she did not get enough freedom and she was like you know like <clears throat> confined in a place so whenever like that things comes into her mind whenever the her mom and she remembers her mom and dad like she relates uh, confinement with her parents but at the same time she loves her parents so it's like a weird complicated feeling that she has so she like obviously she came like you know like one of the objectives was to teach Ank. but the main objective which I think was like you know in Toph's mind was getting freedom being able to do whatever she wants to and she <clears throat> realized that going along with Ang, who is the avatar is the best chance that she can ever get and Aang being the avatar she can just travel to different places and it's the like the ultimate 
uh, way of getting freedom so she actually <clears throat> accompanied them on their journey after that so she got out of her place of like you know from her parents because she wanted freedom she did not want the confinement so like you know uh, sometimes when katara kind of like you know tells her not to do something she i think she kind of relates that with the whole confinement that she went through in her childhood and she does not like that like she values freedom the most and that's why whenever katara kind of like you know becomes a little bit overbearing whenever she says like don't do this don't do that Toph kind of does not like that and you know we've seen this before as well like before as like you know like Toph also kind of had like a uh you know like a confrontation with katara when like you know when in the first few episodes when they after they met uh remember that i i carry my own weight to that episode so like this thing so like and again like that that's one part of their relationship another part of the relationship is that they're very good friends because in the tales of passing say where we see um katara and Toph, you know like them being so much friendly with each other and like you know that was like a nice part of an episode so it's like like katara her relationship with katara is like her relationship with her parents which if we see it like this we can understand like the whole thing with like you know she loves her parents but at the same time she hates the fact that her parents kind of confined her and during her childhood did not let her have freedom similarly with katara she loves katara and at the same time she does not like her like you know sometimes when she kind of like you know let, does not let her do something but if you compare their relationships obviously the love that she feels towards her parents is very different from her love that she friends towards katara because like it's like a friendship love and that's like a familial love and at the same time the thing that she does not like the confinement that the parents made her go through is a lot more than katara even imposes on her the thing that katara does is just she kind of holds her reins that's just what she does so it's in nowhere comparable to the amount of like you know like the way the her parents confined her the way the parents confined her was a lot more so in that way their relationship is a little bit different but it's kind of the same so i'm guessing like you know like with katara she kind of gets reminded of the bad stuff that she went through in her childhood like you know like not at that scale but she can, does not like her actually telling her not to do stuff and at the same time she also really loves her that's why she, she gets reminded of her parents so it's a very complicated thing and she actually is like you know conflicted with her like how to act with her and you know like that's why like a few times they kind of <laughs> clash against each other but you know like at the end of the day they both are friends and like you know like get their age they are going to squabble and you know like fight with each other but by the end yeah everything is going to be all right but so yeah and katara like if and like i'm everything like i'm talking about here from top's point of view in a way katara also kind of a little bit like in a few times i kind of becomes a little bit overbearing at moments but you know like she, like most of the time she's correct but a few times i've seen like she kind of does it a bit too much and i think like katara also realized that by the end of it and that's why she kind of said that okay like you know what let's me as also <laughs> join in with in, with the fun so like you know like Toph also kind of decided to kind of rein herself like you know stop herself from going too overboard and katara also decided to stop herself from going too overboard but unfortunately <laughs> by the end it kind of went bad in a bad direction but we're, we're surely going to uh conquer this situation in the next episode we're going to get out of this mess uh no we already went out of this mess what am i even saying we get got out of this mess is easily <laughs> i forgot for a second that, that they actually broke out of the prison <laughs> so yeah it, everything is fine by the end of it so yeah all right this episode um here we see how the whole <laughs> scamming thing happens and this is what i was a little bit concerned about you know like like one time two time it's okay like you know they can have their fun like gain a little bunny like a gamble a little bit but one or two times but like after that they started going overboard and like you know like left and right scamming people and just like you know like extorting money like just by acting as if like you know that the whole thing of where Toph acts as if she got hurt and 
<laughs> Saka comes out and she, he's like extorting money out of people. Like that was going a little too overboard. And that's what Qatar was actually saying, that don't go too overboard. And we saw what happened by the end of it. <laughs> you know, like they got into <laughs> trouble, real trouble. But <clears throat> thankfully, they did not actually realize, like, you know, the Fire Nation people did not realize that these are, like, you know, like not Fire Nation. They are, this is actually the Avatar and Qatar is an, is an Earthbender. Hopefully that did not happen. That would have been a mess, you know, because... For now, the only person who actually knows that these people are, you know, Katara, Ang, Toff, and Saka, they're actually not firebenders. The only people who knows that know that, at least in this like you know episode, was that guy, the combustion man. <laughs> you know, he's the only one knows that, and he won't tell anyone because Zuko hired him. You know, if he actually tells people that yeah, this this is the like you know it's not Fire Nation. Everyone will get to know and it will go to Oz, um, uh, Ozai. And that will bring like, you know, Zuko's, you know, like shame. And he doesn't want that because Zuko's the one who hired him. So that's one thing off the back that the guy combustion man will actually not tell everyone that, yeah, these people, we need to catch him because they're not Fire Nation. He won't do that. That's a good thing. So... Thankfully, no one realized that these are earthbenders and everything and yeah, like they actually stopped by the end without like, you know, going overboard, without going too overboard. That was good. And this episode really made me realize that, you know, like freedom is good. Like, you know, like there's this whole thing of like, you know, like getting freedom and everything. Like a lot of uh, anime has this theme of freedom, you know, so Freedom is good, but too much freedom is bad, you know, like you actually need someone to hold your reins, especially uh, children who are not really accustomed to, like, you know, to the outer world and who have a lot more, ex lot less experience than other, like, you know, than elders. So Katara is kind of like that. She is the rein that holds down uh, Aang, Saka and Toph, and that is very much needed. Otherwise, we saw what happened. They're going to go complete crazy, you know. Like, we know what. <laughs> Saka will, like, you know, come up with some outrageous plan. Toph will be like, yeah, let's do it. And Ang will, like, you know, at the beginning, Ang will be kind of like, you know what? Yeah, we, we should probably not do this. And then, like, you know, within a minute, he'll be like, yeah, let's, let's do it. And that's going to happen. They, they'll be completely, like, like, they'll go on full-on chaos mode. So, <laughs> Katara being there... Holding their reign is very much needed, especially for these three characters. Like they need, they need to be held down by someone, and Katara does that basically. So, like you know, like and that's that's actually like you know really like you know something that is really needed. Freedom is good, but too much freedom is bad. You really need to actually hold yourself down. Now, if you yourself are aware of the fact that you know like we need to actually hold ourselves down. Then you don't need anyone to like you know hold your reins. You yourself can do it. But for people like <laughs> Saka, Toff, and Ang, who kind of forget at the heat of the moment and go crazy, you need someone, you know, who will actually remind you of the fact that yeah, probably you're going a little bit overboard. So just calm down, you know. Katara does that, and that is definitely needed. So. Yeah, and like you know, like in the end, we see how they kind of like talk with each other. They kind of become friends. Katara's like, you know what? I'm not a mom. <laughs> I also know how to have fun. So let's just, you know, like <laughs> go alongside Toph and let's just participate in a scam. And oh boy, that went completely wrong. <laughs> you know, I remember. I I feel like this. <laughs> The whole section in the end where Katara and Toff is like, you know, like trying to, <laughs> you know, not prank, but trying to like, you know, like scam them and they have their own plan and they're like, you know what, Toff, you get captured, we'll get the money, I'll get the money, you'll metal bend out of there. And <laughs> I was like, you know, like what, like if, if this somehow goes wrong and it, it does went wrong, we see that it completely went wrong. And like you know, I, f I feel like this can kind of like it can be like a <laughs> you know like the title of this show should be like <laughs> this episode should be like um uh what's that like 
uh, prank, like, you know, <laughs> prank on the city guards went horribly wrong. <laughs> My god, that was completely this episode, like, you know, especially the ending. Like, <laughs> they got, they got, like, you know, reverse scammed, actually. Like, Toff gets put in a wood cage and Katara gets captured. <laughs> and, like, this is what I was thinking, like, you know, like, what would happen if they don't actually put her in, an, uh, in a metal cage? And yeah, and I was actually thinking, like, probably they'll start wood bending or something. I was thinking for a moment there, because you guys remember, like, you know, like, where uh, Toff was captured, uh, he, she, she learned metal bending so easily. So I thought maybe, like, wood bending is also a thing. So, like, you know, if you can metal bend, I, I also think, like, you can wood bend, because wood is not like metal, but I think wood also is kind of like a part of earth, isn't it? So... You know, like water and earth, like if you combine water bending and earth bending, can you do wood bending? I don't know, I'm just thinking, like it's like, <laughs> like you know, like, okay, like, you know what, I think I'm, I'm bringing Naruto into this. Like the whole thing with Naruto with the, the water and, you know, like, uh, uh, earth style, like, you know, be, becoming like the wood style. I think I'm bringing that into it. I'm not even sure if wood bending is possible here, but it might be possible. Who knows? Because metal bending is a thing. Why not wood bending? So, like when, when, like, you know, when Katara saw, like, you know, it was sweating, I was like, oh, maybe they really are going to wood bend or something. But she basically, like, you know, just used the water to slash the wood. And obviously, the, she was able to slash metal with that water. Like, why not wood? Wood would be, would be a lot, wood would be a lot easier. Wood would be a lot easier. Okay. And then, obviously, Combustion Man comes in. And that was a great, like, you know, attack, like, Katara just froze his head, like, damn. And one thing that kind of, like, you know, surprised me is when he got hit in his, uh, in the tattoo, he actually wasn't able to properly fire. Now, I always, I always thought that the, the thing at his head was like a tattoo or something, you know, like a painting. And he kind of uses firebending himself to do that. But I, now I think maybe there is some kind of connection with his forehead. And his firebending because at that time he kind of got a little bit rattled and one wasn't able to properly firebend so we'll get to know more of him and yeah now that i realize i've never seen him actually talk he's silent like we've we've been seeing this guy for quite a few episodes and he never actually talked so we don't even know how he sounds like so yeah and in the end everything is okay so yeah, that was good. But this town, we need to get out of here. No more staying in this town. So. Alright, that was a great episode. I really liked the whole, like, you know, thing of, uh, like, Toph and Katara's dynamic. How we see everything and kind of, like, you know, shows us. Yeah. But anyways, okay, so that was it. So let's get started. This is uh, episode number 8. Yeah, episode number 8. Eight, yeah, six, seven, yeah. Eight of after the last airbender. So I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here. Sync it to whichever is a preference and let's get started. All right, so here's a countdown. Three, two, one, go. Hmm. Okay. Let's take this out to avoid any spoilers. Uh oh. Uh, maybe we're going to see more about Zuko this episode. Who knows? Because like, you know, I can kind of see the pattern here. Like they're doing one Zuko episode and kind of doing another, like, you know, which is focusing on Aang and his crew. So 
this. I'm kind of interested to see how Zuko, what Zuko does after this, you know, because I really hope he he actually changes. Like even I, even if after this he doesn't change, I don't know what will make him change. The puppet master, okay. Damn the moon. What the hell? It's like a horror -y vibe. Yep. They're the same ghost stories. Um, what's that noise? <laughs> okay, let's hear. <laughs> oh. Okay. Mom was. Huh. Okay. Um Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, this is a bit too realistic, I think. What? <laughs> um. No. Um, uh, where did she come from? Um, ooh, ooh, this is like a horror story setting. This is a horror story setting. God, <laughs> that's how it every, every time it starts a horror story. Okay. Ah! Um. Oh my god. What the hell? The noises. <laughs> I'm almost even scared. <laughs> yeah. Oh god, Saka. <laughs> Saka's all good. Shopping. <laughs> oh boy. Um, yeah. <laughs> Ash banana. Oh, yeah, this is very real. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Does she suspect them of being... I don't know. Yeah, you're right. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that might be it. But she probably has something, you know, like she knows, as Saka says. Saka's instincts, you know? Don't doubt Saka's instincts. Oh boy. <laughs> Some skeletons in the closet? Oh my god! Oh, okay, it's not skeleton, it's puppets. Great. Oh. Why not? <laughs> okay, let's see. Oh, that's... No, that's, that's a trap. That smells of trap. I've played a lot of JRPGs to know what happens. <coughs> oh my god, it's booby trapped. <laughs> oh yeah, she can just... <laughs> yeah. True. Oh no. Oh! <laughs> yeah. Here you go. Oh, it's a cone. It's a broken. Oh. Oh, she's a waterbender. She kind of looked like, you know, a waterbender. Yeah, she knew. <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why is her nails the pointy? Like she looks like some kind of a I don't know. Wow, Momo. <laughs> Five flavor. Yo, there you go. Yeah. Wait, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Ew, this looks like Katara. That girl. For a moment I thought that was Katara. I was like, how is this possible? How is Katara there? Oh, here we go. Oh my god. Oh, and she gets captured. Oh. 
Oh no, yeah. Wow. Ah. Uh. That girl does look like Katara. Maybe it was their mom. Oh, she escaped. And, and she's also in hiding, I guess. Yeah, why is she still living here? Ugh. Mm. Oh, that's good. I don't know why I've got this nagging suspicion that she's tricking them. Oh no, I think she is tricking them somehow. Hmm. Can you use the moisture in the um Yeah, that was what I was saying, moisture. Ooh, that'll be very handy, you know? Yeah. This will be really helpful to her. Um, Saka. <laughs> Saka. <laughs> um, Dean. File this. Oh. Yeah. Oh, no, no. But the flowers died. Katara. She's true in a sense, but... Oh. Oh my god, she's connected to that somehow. This lady, she is uh Ah. Okay, young man ding. <laughs> ah, yeah, that's all we need. True. Hmm. Oh. Oh my god. Oh, maybe she was using the moisture in... She, maybe the old lady was using the moisture in the body. Oh. Okay.
Okay, I think it is the old lady. Oh! Oh my god. Like a full conspiracy going on. Okay, I think it is the old lady. Maybe she's using, you know, like human bodies, most of it is water. So maybe control them like that as well. Yeah, water bending is really powerful if you use it like that, I guess. What the? It's like a werewolf or something? Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It was her. Oh yeah, using water bending. Yeah, Sokka's instincts. Wait, that guy looks familiar. Who's that? Oh no. Oh. Oh my god. Damn. It's messed up. Yeah, she is using the water in human's body. Oh my god. Ah! Blood bending? Wait, wait, wait. Oh yeah, blood also contain contains water. Oh my god. Oh my god, this is a scary thing. Blood bending, like... You can just explode people from the inside, you can just... Yeah, anyone. Yeah, it's ethically. Oh my God, she is. She's kind of like Jet, you know? She is like Jet. Katara. Same. Yeah. She is completely like that. Oh my god. Yeah, she can just control. Oh my god, this is... Oh! Yeah, she's like a puppet master. Yeah, this lady went crazy with... Oh, can UA help? Oh!
True. Oh, let's go. My God. Whoa. Oh, and she's old, you know, she cannot like her stamina. Oh no, they, she can control them. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Oh no. Oh. And she can just do basic movements, you know? Like, it's not that she can airbend or do something like that. She can just do basic movements with other people. That's... Oh no, the, she can take hostage. Oh god. West off. Whoa, what the? Oh she, Katara! Yeah, Katara. Oh no. She is completely like Jet, you know, the the resentment and everything has warped her inner morals and each and everything and she's turned into a monster. My god. Damn, I was not expecting blood bending. Like I thought that they want to do something like you know like human body contains uh, I think 70% water. Yeah. <laughs> like I've learned this quite a while ago, forgot completely. Yeah, like most of like you know the human body is made out of water. So I thought that's how you know like they're controlling them. And now that I think about it, it is true, like blood also contains that water, you know, the 70% of the water that also includes blood. So and most of blood is liquid and it is water so like that yeah that means you can do blood bending and damn like oh boy like thinking about it you know like blood bending does seem like some kind of an evil technique you know like like blood bending like if you suddenly say like i i can like you know do blood bending people will kind of fear you and be scared of you it'll be kind of like a kind of like a vampire in a way so it does sound evil like you know blood bending but like you know like the as they say like the technique itself is not bad the people you people using them for example tools like you know like whichever tools that we use um like you know a knife which we use to cut you know our food and make a delicious meal that same knife can be used to hurt hurt people so it's not the fault of the weapon or the tool that you're using uh that the bad stuff can be done with it it's the fault of the person using it so if you yourself you know don't use it uh, to do bad stuff and you are a good person it won't actually really matter that much because katara like you know in the end we can see like she feels as if like yeah she has been you know like she has used this and she had gone against her morals her, her ideals and this is the only time she has used it so if further beyond you know further like you know after this if she never uses blood bending to do bad stuff you know like it, it, i think it will be all fine like blood bending itself is just a it's just a technique you know the way you use it the way you utilize it will actually um show whether you are morally correct or morally not correct and that's the main thing if you use it for bad stuff yeah that's a big no-no but if you use it for like you know i don't even know how you can use this for good stuff maybe like you know restraining the enemies yeah that's 
a way i guess you can use it for good stuff so if you use it for just like you know for example if someone comes attacking you or something or maybe in the final battle if she uses it to restrain the enemy and just that you know not harm them but just restrain them i think it'll actually be um helpful in a way because you know like uh for example if like as we can see here like the main problem in this show the main antagonist or the enemy is ozai so like you know i'm sure there are a lot of people who are in the fire nation army who never wanted this war but since they are in the army they have to do this so think about those people if if this is like if they somehow like you know if these people attack you you know and in the final battle let's just think about like a hypothetical situation in the final battle these people are attacking you they have no fault they're just like you know roped in into this war and they don't even want to be in it and like if like let's see let's take uh, this hypothetical situation that katara uses blood bending and <clears throat> like you know like so they're fighting uh if katara never learned blood bending you know maybe ang would have to knock them out or maybe injure them or maybe someone would even die during this process but since katara knows blood bending she can just restrain them you know and just keep them somewhere like not let them move like you know restrain them or like, you know do something like that by controlling them so that would mean that the casualty that would have happened if Qatar did not know blood bending like Aang might have had to take out one or two people and you know like that would not happen now since Katara knows blood blood bending so she's actually doing using it for a good thing and the result is better than it would have had been so that's what I'm actually trying to say here, you know, like the way you use something is some something that will actually determine whether you are morally correct or morally not correct. And if she uses this for proper good things like this, I don't think it'll matter that much. It'll be even beneficial for her that she knows blood bending. She, now she feels like, yeah, like I have gone against my mor gone against my morals. But she did this to actually restrain her. Like, think about this situation. If Katara actually did not use bloodbending here, you know, like, like Saka and Ang would have gotten hurt. So she used the bloodbending to actually stop a bad thing from happening and have a good, like, you know, have a good, what can I say, mm, result. So she used this for a good thing. She's feeling like, you know, like I can understand how she's feeling now that she's feeling like, yeah, I use blood bending, even though I said I would not stoop so low. Like, you know, she's kind of thinking it like that. But if you think about it in a broader sense, you'll realize that what she did here actually saved uh, uh, Aang, and, uh, Aang and Saka and she helped them. It's, it's a good thing. If she did not use blood bending here, they would have gotten hurt. Like, I think like Aang, like Aang could have, like Saka would have really gotten hurt, you know and ang would have also gotten hurt because like, the blade was pointed at him i think so she saved them there you go like think it about it that this way so hopefully uh, katara realizes this in the upcoming ep few episodes otherwise you know like she she'll be like this you know she'll be something like yeah i won't use blood bending and if there is a situation which comes where she really needs to use blood bending but she has this complex in her head that yeah i should not use blood bending you know she might not actually use it and the result might be worse than it would have had been if she actually used blood bending so hopefully she actually realizes this that she can actually help people with this so yeah damn that was a great episode um here we see like you know like at the beginning when <laughs> the old woman comes and hama comes and she's like oh come with us i was thinking like this will be some kind of like a ghost spooky filled episode <laughs> you know the way they started everything and then we get to know that she is a nice old lady a uh, water vendor and you know like like it's kind of giving me mixed signals and i kind of started thinking like maybe this lady is actually um <laughs> you know not as good as we think she is because you know she's kind of smirking a little bit <laughs> so yeah, and then like we can we see what was happening, you know, and the whole like, like this episode, the first part of this episode was full of mixed signals. Like you know, the whole scene where they come across a room where there is um like you know a treasure box. Like that was like a 
<laughs> scene from an RPG, like, you know, like, there's, like, one single room with one single treasure chest. It's, it reeks of trap. <laughs> Damn, I got reminded of playing some JRPGs, like, you know. But anyways, um, <laughs> like, yeah, she gets there, and, like, you know, that, that was full of mixed signals, but then we thought that, okay, maybe this lady is actually good. And then when she said that, you know what, I can teach you how to use water from the moisture in the atmosphere. I was like, damn, that'll be really helpful because, you know, like you don't even need a supply of water. You can just suck the air for water and you can't do it much because, you know, if you do it too much, the air will become dry and, it, you know, like arid and you might like, you know, like that, that won't help. But for a little bit, you know, like for small little stuff, you can just use it where there is no supply of water. So, yeah, that would be very powerful. And as soon as we get to that scene where she uses the water in the fire lilies, I was like, yeah, this lady is, you know, like, probably the one who is doing everything. And then when, when, I think his name was Ding, what was his name? Ding, I think, yeah, the old man. When she, when he says that, oh, everyone was like being controlled and everything, it, it, it clicked. I was like, okay, they, she must be using the water in people's bodies. But I did not think that she's actually using blood bending and it is like an actual bending technique. That, that did not come into my mind. So, <clears throat> yeah, now, okay, now here's the thing. Uh, she tells us about her story of how she was captured uh, by the Fire Nation and everything, how she, right? And like, you know, like, I don't blame her, as I said, like, you know, she, she went through a lot and that experience probably warped her sense of morality and everything. And she had to, like, you know, also break out of that situation by using blood bending. And uh, you know what I actually, like I was saying the stuff about Katara, you know, like how she can use this for a good thing. I think the thing that actually scares Katara is not that. I think the thing that actually scares Katara is that once you go down that hole, you know, like you won't be about to be able to get out. So I think that's what's scaring her, you know, like as Hama used blood bending, she started walking a path which from which she wasn't able to get back out of it. And now you look at him, how she ha what happened to her. So I think Katara's probably fearful at, at, at that. She, I'm sure she, Katara also realizes that she can use this for a lot of good things. But I think she's scared of the fact that she might start turning into Hama, you know, like once you start walking that path, you can't come back. I think that's what's scaring her. Yeah, I, I think I realize it now. That's why she was crying in the end. But, you know, Hama was alone. No one was there to help her, to guide her, you know, to stop her when she does something bad. We have Aang, uh, Saka and uh, Toph with her. I don't think that's going to happen. So, yeah, hopefully she realizes that. And... You know, but yeah, anyways, like, uh, yeah, as I was saying, like, you know, like she had to, like, Hama had to go through these type of stuff, and and that's why, like, you know, she kind of got warped, her sense of morality got warped, and the whole vengeance thing started happening to her. And now I realize why she stays in the Fire Nation, that's the reason why she, she wants revenge. And this whole thing obviously, like, you know, reminded us of Jet, like, you know, the, like, this is Jet's situation, like, you know. So, like, like, it's the same thing that's happening. And Hama, I think Hama has gone a bit too much into the dark side. Jet was still a little bit there, you know? But Hama went too much into the dark side. And he, she, she's completely, like, you know, kind of uh, like evil now because of that. And like, I think, like, she wanted Katara to actually... Uh, learn this because you know like she wanted more people to come walk her path so that they can get revenge and that's why you know in the end she smirked and she's like my job is done and she 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 was able to teach katara blood bending and yeah that was really something and uh, <clears throat> yeah so obviously like you know like it's it's not her fault that she is like this now, it's the fault of the situation and the fault of uh, Ozai, who, who actually, like, you know, like, ordered the... Or maybe not Ozai, like, I don't even know who was, like, you know, at fault here. You know, like, maybe it was Ozai's father who did this. He says 60 years ago. Yeah, definitely that was not Ozai. Like, what am I even saying? 
<laughs> no, it's it's not Ozai. It was it was Ozai's father. You know, like that is Zuko's grandfather, most probably. Who, uh, like, you know, who probably uh, ordered the Firebenders to go and raid the South Water, Southern Water Tribe. Yeah, it was not Ozai. Ozai, I think, uh, fifty years ago, Ozai probably was not even born. Yeah. Maybe, uh, yeah, maybe it was even, it can be Sozen, you know, maybe it was Sozen. 60 years ago, uh, no, it was not Sozen. I think it was probably Ozai's dad, who, who was the leader at that time, you know. So, yeah, the, 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 the one at fault is obviously the Fire Leader, uh, Fire Nation, uh, Fire Lord. So, yeah, like... Nothing you can like you say like I'm not saying it's the fault of the Fire Nation because as I said like I'm sure there are a lot of people who actually got roped into this mess because of their leader's orders. Like I'm sure there's a lot of Fire Nation people who are in the army who doesn't even want to fight, doesn't even want to continue the war. But you know, nothing you can do about it. If you are a Fire Nation, you have to listen to your leader. And the way they showed us the whole, like, you know, the way they kept the uh, prisoners, you know, especially fire, uh, water nation prisoners, it was really messed up, you know, like, there's, like, like, chained up and there's, like, no water in the atmosphere, even if you need to get drink water, they, like, you know, like, use that thing to feed you water, it's, like, treating you, like, worse than animals, like, that's messed up, and... Yeah, that was something. And here's another thing that I think about. Like she was actually using uh, blood bending to control the people. Um, I think you can even use this for some um, more, like you know, scary stuff. Like you're bending blood. You can you can probably stop the blood from flowing, and that's how you can get a heart attack and die. Just like you know, you can just die like that. Like if you can blood bend, you know, you can just like you know, like stop the blood from flowing. You know, like the, the oxygen won't get into your different parts of your body, and you you just die like that, or like you know maybe what you can you can just like I don't know like use the blood to explode or something, like, you know kind of like go crazy inside your bloodstreams and you might get an internal like you know uh, like cut or internal rupture of your blood vessels and you can die like that as well, like it's really scary now that you think about it like blood bending it's like a scary technique and you can probably do a lot of things with it like she just showed us how you can control people you can probably kill people like that just like standing there you can just you'll be like yeah you stop there die and just die that that that's possible i guess using blood bending like damn it's scary yeah like wow like one of the deadliest i guess bending technique one of the dead, deadliest bending technique my god like now I'm, i wonder <laughs> you know um like you can use air bending in that way also can't you like you know like we, we breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide like if you actually stop people from breathing you know like uh at first when we breathe in when the air actually goes through our nostrils through our windpipe it's still an air form, you know, when it goes to her heart, it's, it gets mixed up in the water, uh, in the blood, and it's not air anymore. Before that, it's still an air form. Can you just stop that, you know, like using air bending, and you can just be like, you know, like, I don't know, like people can suffocate, you can just suffocate people to death like that, if you use air bending like that. Now that I think about it. Damn, like air bending and water bending, like, you know, both like, you know, oxygen that you you know in hay you can just stop that and kill people and using blood bending as we saw you can also kill people like that i guess so wow i wonder if they're going to actually uh, introduce this to us in the future you know like using air bending to kill people like this you know like by stopping by suffocating them just who knows if we have blood bending i won't be surprised if air bending can used be used to do something like that so yeah that was it that was this episode and uh, yeah wow another great episode damn these episodes are getting really great i'm i'm, lo I'm loving season three it's just so good and yeah like i remember people saying that you know like if, like season two and three gets even better and three is like the best and i i can understand why people say that this is fantastic this this season from the beginning to now that i'm watching it 
so fantastic like so many new stuff and so many things like so good so yeah that was it so that's it guys so thank you guys for watching this is my reaction to avatar the last airbender book three episode number seven and eight so if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed and comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know i'll check them out that's it so thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next week with two more episodes of avatar the last airbender until then goodbye and have a nice day